expire. The gentlelady from Texas is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Me, I didn't get that last time. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Taibbi, um, I want to follow up a little bit on the ranking member's questions. Um, when was the first time that Mr. Musk approached you about writing uh, uh, the Twitter files? Uh, again, Congresswoman, that would be, uh, I just need a date, sir. But I can't give it to you, unfortunately, because this, this is a question of sourcing, and I don't give up. I'm a journalist. A, I don't reveal my source. It's a question of chronology. No, that's a question because of sourcing. Because you earlier said that, that someone had sent you through the Internet some message about whether or not you would be interested in some information. Yes, and I refer to that person as a source. So you're not going to tell us when Musk first approached you? Again, Congressman, when you're asking me to yes you're no. asking a journalist to reveal so a source. So then you consider Mr. Musk to be the direct source of all this? No, now you're you're trying to get me to say that he is the source. I I, I, well, I just can't answer your is question. Well, he is isn't. Or if you're telling me you can't answer because it's your source, well then that the only logical conclusion is that he is in fact your source. Well, you're free to conclude that. Well, sir, I just don't understand. You can't have it both ways, but let's move on. because No, he can. He's a journalist. No, he can't, because either Musk is the source and he can't talk about it, or Musk is not the source. And if Musk is not the source, then he can discuss No his one has yielded. The gentlelady is out of order. You don't and get to speak. she's out of order because he's interrupted. The gentlelady is not recognized. You're not recognized. He has not said that. What he has said is he's not going to reveal his source. And the fact that Democrats are pressuring him to do so is such a not. We're asking him about his conversations with Musk. The gentlelady has has not yielded you time. You don't get I have to not just talk yielded time her. to anybody. I want to reclaim my time, and I would ask the chairman to give me back some of the time because of the interruption. Mr. Chairman, I am asking you if you will give me the seconds that I lost. We will give you that 10 seconds. Thank you. Now, let's talk about another uh, item that you, when you responded to the ranking member, you said that you had free license to look at everything, but yet you yourself posted on your, your um, I guess it's kind of like a web page, I don't quite understand what Substack is, but uh, that what I can say is that in exchange for the opportunity to cover a unique and explosive story, I had to agree to certain conditions. What were those conditions? She asked you that question and you said you had none, but you yourself posted that you had conditions. No, the, the conditions, as I've explained multiple times. No, uh, sir, you've not explained. You told her, her in response to her question that you had no conditions. In fact, you, you kind of used the word license, that you were free to look at all of them, all 100,000 emails. I, I was, the, the question was posed, was, was I free to, to write about? Sir, did you have any conditions? The condition was that we published Sir, did you Twitter. have any conditions, yes or no? A simple question. Yes. All right. Could you tell us what conditions those were? The conditions were an attribution, sources at Twitter, and that we, we break any news on Twitter. But you didn't break it on Twitter. Did you send the file that you released today to Twitter first? Did I send the Sir, I, actually, I'm I did, you today. yes. Yeah. You, you, did you send it to Twitter first? The Twitter file That files was one of the threat? conditions? Yeah. Yes or no, sir? The Twitter files thread actually did come out first. But, sir, you, you said earlier that you had to attribute all the sources to Twitter first. What you released today, did you send that to Twitter first? No, no, no. I, post, I posted it on Twitter. First. First, sir. Or did you give it to the ranking member, to the chairman of the committee or the staff of the committee first? Well, that's not breaking the story. That's giving, yes, I did, I did give. Uh, so you the, gave all the information that you did not give to the Democrats. You gave it to the Republicans first. Then you put it on Twitter? Actually, no, the chronology is a little bit confused. Well, then, it's more then tell or less us the what the chronology time. was. I believe the thread came out first. Where? On Twitter. On Twitter. So then you afterwards gave it to the Republicans and not the Democrats? Yes, because I'm submitting it for the record as my, as my statement. Did you give it to them in advance? I gave it to them today. You gave it to them today, but you still have not given anything to the Democrats. Well, I'll, I'll, again, I'll move on. And I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Schellenberger the same question, sir. When did you first uh, visit with or get contacted by Mr. Musk? 
I'm not going to reveal my sources, but like I said, I was invited by Barry Weiss. I'm not was, asking for sources, sir. I'm just asking yeah, for chronology. I was, when did you first make contact with Mr. Musk? I don't know the exact date. Was it? It was December. It was December. December of, well, there's a lot of Decembers in December here. December of last which, year. Which December? December of last year, ma'am. Last year, the 20, uh, 22? Yes. All right. Now, in, um, in your discussion, in your answer, you also said that you were invited by a friend, Barry Weiss? My friend, Barry Weiss. So this friend works for Twitter, or what is, what is her? Um... She's a journalist. Sir, I didn't ask you a question. I'm, I'm now asking Mr. Schellenberger a question. Please yes, ma'am. Barry interrupt. Weiss is a journalist. I'm sorry, sir? She's a journalist. She's a journalist. So you work in concert with her? Um, yeah. Do you know when she first um, was contacted by Mr. Musk? I, I don't know. You don't know. So you're in this as a threesome? Um, there was many more people involved than that. There was many more people involved with it. Are you being paid to be here today, either through consulting fees, <sighs> no. campaign contributions, to your not. next run? General ladies, Do you have an interview General scheduled ladies, after time this has hearing? Expired. Absolutely not. General Absolutely. ladies, time Thank has you. expired. Thank you. I just, I don't know what to say other than I'll, I'll recognize the gentleman from North Dakota for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll yield my five minutes oh, to I you. Oh, I appreciate the gentleman uh, yielding. Uh, I do think it's worth pointing out that, you know, I have co-sponsored, I think some of my colleagues have co-sponsored the SHIELD Act in previous Congresses with Democrats to protect what we see them trying to do today, protect journalists from having to reveal their sources to government. That used to be a shared position in the Congress. Unfortunately, as we're seeing now, multiple occasions, it's not the, it's not the position anymore. Uh, Mr. Schellenberg, I want to go to Twitter files part seven. I related a lot of what you put in there in my opening statement. And I want to give you as much time as you want, because I'm going to read the very first sentence, because something jumped out at me when I read the first sentence in Twitter files number seven, the FBI and the Biden laptop. You say this, how the FBI and intelligence community discredited factual information about the Biden foreign business dealings both after and before the New York Post revealed the contents of his laptop on October 14th, 2020. And what stuck, kind of jumped out at me was the way you framed it, because you did it backwards from what it's normally said. Normally you would say, the sentence would read, foreign business dealings both before and after. But I assume you did that for a reason, because in fact, I think the next sentence you say social media companies discredit leaked information about Hunter Biden before and after. You use the normal customary way in the second sentence, but the first sentence strikes me as you were trying to emphasize the before component of that statement. And I want you to just walk us through why you said that, because when I read it, it certainly was an operation uh, b both before and after, as you said, after and before. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Reading through the whole sweep of events, I do not know the extent to which the influence operation aimed at pre-bunking the Hunter Biden laptop was coordinated. I don't know who all was involved, but what we saw was you saw Aspen and Stanford many months before then saying, don't cover the material in the hack and leak without emphasizing the fact that it could be disinformation, okay? So they're priming journalists to not cover a future hack and leak in the way that journalists have long been trained to with the, in, the, in the tradition of the Pentagon Papers, made famous by the, the Steven Spielberg movie. They were saying, cover the fact that it, that it probably came from the Russians. Then you have the former general counsel to the FBI, Jim Baker, the former deputy chief of staff to the FBI, both arriving at Twitter in the summer of 2020, which I find what an co interesting coincidence, then when the New York Post publishes its first article on October 14th, it's Jim Baker who makes the most strenuous argument within Twitter, multiple emails, multiple messages saying this doesn't look real, uh, there's people, there's intelligence experts saying that this could be Russian disinformation. He is the most strenuous person inside Twitter arguing that it's probably Russian disinformation. The internal evaluation by Yoel Roth, who testified in front of this committee, was that it was what it looked to be, which was that it was not a result of a hack and leak operation. And why did he think that? Because the New York Post had published the FBI subpoena taking the laptop in December of 2019. 
and they published the agreement that the laptop computer store owner, the computer store owner rather, had with Hunter Biden that gave him permission after he abandoned the laptop to use it however he wanted. So there really wasn't much doubt about the provenance of that laptop, but you had Jim Baker making a strenuous argument, and then of course you get to a few days after the October 14th release, you have the President of the United States echoing what these, these former intelligence community officials were saying, which is that it looked like a Russian influence operation. Yeah. <clears throat> so they were, they were claiming that the laptop was made public by a conspiracy theory. And the conspiracy theory that somehow the Russians got it and they, right. they, and basically the, they convinced Joel Roth that it was, they convinced him of this wild hack and leak story that somehow the Russians stole it, got the information, gave it to the computer store, and it was bizarre. So you read that chain of events, and it appears as though there is an organized influence operation to pre-bunk. Why? Why do you think they could predict the time, the method, and the person? Why could the FBI predict it? I'm, it's, Why, they it's they, they, not only did they predict it, they predicted it, so did the Aspen Institute. Yeah. Seemed like everyone was in the know saying, here's what's going to happen. We can read the future. Why do you think, how do you think they were able to do that? I, I, the F, I think the most important fact to know is that the FBI had that laptop in December 2019. They were also spying on Rudy Giuliani when he got the laptop and when he gave it to the New York Post. Now, maybe the FBI agents who were going to Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook and to Twitter executives and warning of a hack and leak potentially involving Hunter Biden, maybe those guys didn't have anything to do with the guys that had maybe. the laptop. We don't know that. I know. But I have to say, as a newcomer to this, as somebody that thought it was Russian disinformation in 2020, everybody I knew thought it was Russian I was shocked to see that period, that series of events going on. It looked to me like a deliberate influence operation. I don't have the proof of it, but the circumstantial evidence is, is pretty disturbing. It's pretty overwhelming. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shellam.